Chapter 56 The Citadel and the Tower Well, we know one thing, Lydia said. There is magic at work here if the way to the library can change so easily and without a sound. I think that fits with our understanding of the sixth essence, said Dev. Knowledge, how? No, not knowledge, Dev contradicted. Odysseus and I were talking about this last night. Ambrose said more than once he preferred the term sentience over knowledge or wisdom. He was quite insistent, which cannot have been easy for him. Mm, Xander told us it was sentience, Lydia recalled. So the implication is that someone or something is aware of us, maybe even of our purpose. It may seem a strange possibility, but I suspect it is the library itself. Such a collection of knowledge and wisdom and magic might develop its own awareness. So is it trying to stop us because it's scared of us? Freddy asked. I'm not sure, Dev mused. Perhaps it is protecting its knowledge from outsiders. Possibly it is keeping the token from questing teams. Maybe it's testing us to see if we're worthy, Lydia suggested. How do we know? How do we decide? We persist, I suppose, Dev said. If we don't know what it wants, Freddy said, and it's clever and aware and stuff. Yes, Lydia asked. Why don't we talk to it? Freddy concluded. It has thoughts, perhaps, Dev said, but it has no mouth. It has words, though, Lydia pointed out. Yes, in the books or scrolls, Dev agreed. Written words, in languages we do not understand. I was always good at runes and languages, Lydia said. Professor Rankin said it was far-fetched that anyone could pick up runes as fast as I do, and understand the meaning in ancient languages. I suspect it was something to do with the old magic, or Ambrose's interference, more likely. But how would we exchange runes with a library which seems reluctant to let us in? Deva asked. Lydia sighed. Perhaps, as you said, we have to persist. We have to find a way into the library and then, I don't know, write in a book or something. Why don't you do what the Watcher does? Freddy suggested. Meet the library in a dream. Lydia blinked several times as she pondered this. Freddy, you're a genius. You don't have to sound quite so surprised, Freddy said. But yeah. Do you think you can do it, Lydia? Dev asked. Yes, she said with some certainty. I feel that this is what I'm supposed to do. It will come easily. I suspect I'll find the library is reaching out to me. Do you want your sleeping bag? Freddy asked. No, I just need to relax and zone out, she said. You mustn't get bored like you do, Fredster. Or you can get as bored as you like, but don't pester me with it. Why not get Xander out? Freddy suggested. I always find his purring dead relaxing. Lydia grinned. Or are in your keep today, Fredster, thanks. She opened her rucksack and let Xander out. He slinked out and placed himself in her lap. As she sat down with her back to the corridor wall, he purred. She closed her eyes and relaxed. It took her mere seconds to drift into a trance-like state. Lydia was sitting on the grass. She was looking down over the dark lake at Hogwarts. There was Gertie, the giant squid, waving at her. She waved back. This was her dream. There was no need to fear the Watcher. She had not invited him. Someone stepped forward from behind her and sat down next to her. She turned and he smiled at her. He had a kind face. He looked like Freddy or Corbin. She realised she had always thought of Corbin's looks as a darker version of Freddy. Handsome, pretty even, sensitive and compassionate. Freddy had unruly blonde hair. Corbin's was short and dark. This young man was somewhere between the two, coffee-skinned with lustrous brown hair. He would not have seemed out of place in the streets of the city. Hello, she greeted him. I'm Lydia. Hi, he grinned surprising her with his informality. I am more than the library, more than the citadel. I am Shakika, the city and the surrounding lands. Do you know I am here? I mean, in your city, in your world? She asked. He smiled. 
I do. I know you, hero and queen. And I know your friends. And your Mao, Sander. And I know Freddy. He's a special person. You are right to cherish him, and lucky to be bonded to him. Do you know Sophie? Lydia asked, with a squirming sensation inside her. Yes, she is safe, not too far away. That is what you wanted to know, isn't it? She blushed. Sophie understands your burden, Lydia, he assured her. She always has. She forgives much for the sake of your friendship. Never take her for granted. But she is faithful to you and your cause. What about the token we're looking for? Lydia asked. Shakika drew a deep breath. I know this as well. You don't need to go to the library. You just needed to get in touch with me, like this. It's nice to meet you, and Zander. Hey, Shakika, said Zander. Lydia realised he had been sitting in her lap all the time in her dream, purring away. She felt a swell of love for him. I think you were about to tell Lydia where to find the token, Shakika, Zander prompted. I was, said the young man. He looked sad. On an impulse, Lydia reached out and touched his hand. Is there a problem? she asked gently. There is always a problem, he said with a sigh. There are many problems where people are concerned. You see, for each token there is a test, protection of some kind. Lydia prompted him to continue. In a city of humans, the trial is the people, he said. You will have to evade, outwit and probably kill the guards. My guards. It is sad, but it is inevitable. And there is another great sadness. Lydia shook her head. What is that? He sighed and swept his hand across the scene in front of them. This. All this beauty. Somewhere dear to you, I can tell. I like the greenery. It's Scotland, she explained. It rains a lot, and it's the green. I will miss it when you go, Shakika said. I will miss its beauty, and I will miss you, and your beauty, if I may say so. I read a great deal about beauty, and romance, and love. There have been many wondrous poets in this land. I have wondered sometimes whether I could ever appreciate beauty, or even know love. And now that I've met you... She took his hand in hers and smiled. Good way to prove your love would be to quit stalling and tell me where to find the token. Shakika laughed. It rang out across the grass and down towards the lock. I knew you were special, Lydia, he said. You can't blame me. This type of connection is so rare for me. And you are honestly very special. I can't help wanting to make the most of it. But you are pressed for time. The token is in my highest tower. I'll take you to the tower. Just follow the corridor. Watch out for the guards. They have their jobs to do. And get Freddy to consult his mandala before you set off, so that you know what you're looking for. Thank you, Shakika, Lydia smiled. It was nice to meet you. Thanks for your help. And a delight for me to meet you, he enthused. Please, forgive me an old city for being appreciative. Shakika and Hogwarts faded from Lydia's view. I met with the library, Lydia told them. Well, actually, it was the entire city. Anyway, he said the token is in the tower, not the library. If we follow this corridor, it'll take us to the tower. But first, Freddy needs to check the mandala, so we know what the token looks like. I was betting it's going to be a ball, either white or pearly, Freddy moaned. He took the mandala from his bag. It still held its spherical shape. He lifted it up and concentrated. It's clearing, he whispered. The cloud's dissolving and inside is... a ball. White or pearlescent? Dev asked. Neither, Freddy frowned. It's clear. I think it's a crystal ball. It's got a purplish tint. Can I see, Freddy? Lydia asked. Hang on, babes, he said. Something weird's happening. It's like my eyes are zooming in. It's not getting bigger, but I can sort of see it close up. There's a picture inside. Oh my God, it's us, wave lids. Lydia waved her hand. Freddy squealed. Ah, it is us. It's like entirely us, here and now. 
This must be a seer stone, Dev said. I was talking with Quinn the other day. He told me there was a legend that the first king of Shakika had a magic ball which could see over great distances. Even into the future, it was rumoured. It's a pretty colour, Reddy noted. Well, now we've got to find it, Lydia reminded them. Can't we go back and get the others? Dev asked. They're bound to be guardians of some kind. I don't think so, Lydia said. Shakika said we should go forward, not back. He said the trial would be the city guards. Oh, Dev remarked. The guards covered with armour and swords and stabby things, Freddy said in horror, then sighed. Oh, maybe if we talk to them nicely they'll show us the way. Instead of stabbing us, or as well as? Dev asked. 